Yeah, money. Fish on the feather. Oh, so there are fish under the birds. It's just a baby. Awesome. Bye-bye. Boy, do I got a special treat for you guys today. I have a reel in this bag that we're gonna put on this brand new, I'm gonna call this the tuna stick, but you're, you'll notice it's got an eye on this side and then eyes on the opposite side. And it's a very large pole. This is gonna be the tuna wonder stick. And we are gonna catch a tuna on this rod today. I, I freaking hope so, or a mahi or something cool. Now in this bag, this right here is the, the Trolley X. This is an electric reel. See, there's an on and off button, but it is not assisted. So it's, uh, you still gotta reel your fish in, but this is gonna tell us how far our line is out. And I do a lot of tuna fishing, and I always say, put a feather way 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 back and you will catch tuna on it and mahi and it seems like most people don't put their feathers far enough back and this reel is going to tell us exactly how far back our line is so you guys will for once in and all know how far back i put my tuna feathers because they got to be far back to catch a tuna let's put our reel on our new rod and this is a pc fun rod and pc fun reel you can get 18% off all of their rods, reels, tackle bags, all their good stuff, pcfun.com, and use the code SFFC18. They're huge sponsors of the channel, and they make these videos possible. So let's stick it on in, shall we? So far, so good. I just ran into a small problem. Okay, the Trolley X, this is a kind of a compact reel. And the back of it is not big enough. So you see like a 50 wide, a 30 wide, your big offshore reels, they fit in here. But this little reel, it's not gonna fit. It's too small, which throws a little wrench in my game plan because I was so excited to use this as our new tuna stick. Oh, it's just that's just gonna have to be a different video if you guys can bear with me but I already know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this rod. <laughs> you guys ready for this? And we are gonna put the Kraken X on it. Oh, that is gonna be a sexy setup. You know what, we will do that maybe in the next video, but I'm dying to run the Trolley X reel. This is, I've been dreaming about using this reel because I can then actually show you guys how far back the tuna feather is, so. I'm going to find another rod. Well, that was the perfect example of how things don't always go to plan, but you just gotta make it work. So look at the difference between these two rods. I'm gonna put it on the big camera. This is like your average trolling rod size. And then this is the, the big game PC fun tuna stick. It's like two and a half feet bigger than this rod which gets your line way up in the air and way behind all the other lines. Perfect for fishing a feather way behind the boat, but we're still gonna make it work with the shorter, just normal rod. This is uh, just your average trolling rod, but I believe that this rod can fit smaller reels. Yep, it sure can. And there we go, perfect. All right, part two, time to put some line on it. And I went ahead and picked up this suffix line, high visibility, yellow, neon, lime color. You wanna use a very high visibility color because then you can see your line go way behind the boat. This here is 20 pound test. And the, the Trolley X reel, it can hold 325 yards of 30 pound and it's got your 30 your 40 and your 50 so i'm actually going to go very light with this reel and only put 20 pound instead of 30 pound on it and i'll tell you why i know a lot of guys that do some tarpon fishing around here they only use 12 pound tests to catch like 100 pound tarpon and that's because mono is very stretchy and as long as your drag is set right you can catch very big fish 
on 20 pound test. So I would rather have more line than less line. So we're gonna use the 20 pound. For tuna and mahi, I think that's perfect. Very perfect. And then we just bring the fishing line down through all the guides of your rod. Boom. And there is a line guider inside. So you wanna make sure your line goes through the line guide and then tie it onto the spool. The great thing about this reel is that it has a very large capacity of line and it has the line guide. So if you have people on your boat that don't really know what they're doing, a line guide is great because all they gotta do is reel. They don't have to worry about guiding the line onto the uh, trolling reel properly. Basically, I'm just gonna make this little new loop knot that cinches down and there's a tiny little thing on the spool there, a little bump that you can put your line on top of and then cinch it down on there. Bam, easy freaking peasy. There you go. Where's my line cutter? All right. Okay. Now for the fun part, we're going to spool our line. So you want to keep a little bit of tension on your line. I like to use my fingers, just kind of pinch the line and you just start reeling and you can see the line starts to go onto the reel very evenly because of that line counter or the line guide is putting it on there beautifully. Now we're gonna drop this spool into this bucket of water, which the water gives the spool a little bit of tension, which I just fine makes it easier to do all this. And that's it. We're spooling up the new Trolley X. And then I'm gonna show you guys the line counter feature. And then we're actually gonna go do some fishing. Do you guys think we're gonna catch a tuna on this rod? Woo, look at that. That is a full spool. Yeah, I think we are good on that. Perfect. At the end of all of this, we will be trolling the black and purple feather. So these are called feathers, but uh, on SouthFloridaFishingChannel.com, we call these weedless squid rigs. And if you look on the website, it actually shows you how to rig this rig with a squid to where the hook is hidden inside of the squid. That makes it weedless and you can troll those squids right over seaweed and stuff and it, it never um, gets seaweed on it, which is great. But you can also just troll them just like this. And you know, it's just your typical tuna feather. So these feathers, they also come with a snap swivel, which is great because that means all you gotta do is tie the end of this line to your snap swivel. I'm going to use a uni knot for this. Bam. Three, four. Tighten that. I love the uni knot. Clip off the tag end. And there we go. To the little feather that we will be sending way, way back. <laughs> I'm a little behind schedule. Dan is probably wondering where I am. But there we go. That's going to be our tuna feather rod hopefully we catch nice tuna let's go fishing so we have arrived at dan's house and it seems like the wind is picking up of course it is we're going on a suicide mission suicide mission the first thing dan asked me when i got here is if i brought a kite <laughs> yeah. we need keys in order for this boat to run <laughs> all right dan's gonna get the keys we got all of our beautiful rods the Trolley X is going to be put to the test today. I was a good boy and brought a big thing of water. And then Dan told me that there's beer in the cooler. I wasn't going to drink today. No, it's my fault. But it is Sunday. So I will scoop my hand past the water and straight to the beer. Going straight for the beer, Dan. It's going to be a good day. And so it begins. Look, I have this electric reel, the Trolley X. <laughs> Dan says, I'm busy driving. I believe in you. You're a professional driver now. Remember, when in doubt, throttle full down and full back and full down and full back. <laughs> While you're hitting every boat and doing boop. Once you start, you. It's a downward spiral. There's nothing worse you could do 
when boating is when you get nervous to give it full throttle. Yeah, you just like you get all freaking flustered. You, you yeah, you'd be better off bumping slowly into something than. Right. Uh, bang bang. Bang bang. So now I can show you. you. So this is an electric uh, what? It just measures how much uh -huh. line is out. But you know what I've always wanted to know? Yeah. When we put a feather way way back, how far out it uh, actually is. This way we do it every time. Boom. Yeah, and then, you know, just to get a good feel for it. It's supposed to be good for, like, learning your distances. Okay. Is it a good jigging wheel, do you think? It's mm. electric. It's electric. No, no, it's oh, all it's manual. Okay. It only okay. is an electric line counter. Okay. But it's more just to see how... How far out you are. Like, if I know it's all the way back there, I'm like, oh, that's 100 yards. Okay. All right. All right. It'll just be interesting. Because yeah. then we can call out our distances better in the future. Hey, 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 here we go. You. All right. Well, it is a wavy day out here. Today, two to four footers, easy. And all the camera gear is getting splashed, so we might have some audio problems <laughs> in this episode. All right, well, you let me know when it's time to start fishing. All right, well, I guess I'll put the feather out first, right? Super far back, we're putting the feather out. Oh, first we gotta turn it on. Hold the on button for like five seconds. It says zero, zero. Push the hatch down and the line will start going out. 40 feet, 50 feet, 70 feet. Woo! Wow. I got it out 250 feet. Is that good? I mean, I don't know how far that is. I don't know. Is that good? I don't it looks about right. Wow, that's 250 feet. I didn't know we were putting it that far out. Well, I'll put this one super high. <sighs> we got some winds, <laughs> some waves, I mean. Woo, oh. Yeah, getting splashed nicely here. All right, which one goes out next? All right, so we got the DTX. We put a DTX on that one. I think should I put another feather last. up? The last? That one should be like the closest to the boat. This one? Uh, this one should be closer to the boat. That's the biggest. Alright. We should probably get them down first, yeah, right? Alright, so. So, DTX first. And then. Actually. Where's the DTX? Holy macaroni. Alright. My hat's gonna blow away. Is that? Oh. <laughs> my hat's about to blow off my head. Quite the conditions today. I definitely feel like I'm gonna lose my hat today. DTX is out. Now we're gonna put this guy out and then we are good to go. That one's real close behind the boat. So we got two dive plugs and a feather. We got three now, we're putting the last one out. This is going to be a close-in feather. All right, four rods. We're in the zone. Are we popping back here? Is that a little bit? You see it popping? There we go. It looks pretty good. We got the line here that time, right in there. Yeah, right there. Oh! Woo! I feel pretty good about this setup. I feel like yeah. I feel like we can't get tangled right now. No, this is, I think you got it. I think you're working it perfect. I could even put out that fifth one, but no, yeah, so it, it would be. That would be it would be. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, shit. Dan just almost hit a buoy. Oh shit! <laughs> That's the way to start. Yeah, it, you got to watch out for buoys out here. That would be the. Uh, that is the way to start it off. Molasses Reef is right there. We are in 115 feet of water, looking for the big boy. And we got some nice rain clouds. <laughs> we are obviously attracted to uh, deadliest weather. <laughs> Part of our charm. Time for numero dos. 
Liquid Aloha. He might, that guy looks like he might be drifting live baits because he's moving real slow. He might even be sail fishing. If he's sail fishing, then, uh, oh yeah, he's got a kite out. You see the kite all the way out there? Um, that might be the other boat actually. So, <laughs> you're right, Dan, they're flying kites today. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that boat out there is flying a kite for sure. Yeah, this guy's not. It, it kind of looks like he's reeling something in. We we just had a huge hit on the tuna rod. Oh, oh hit it again, hit it again. Oh! Hit it again. Holy I, shit. I think he's on, actually. It is a small Oh, fish. yeah, he's on. Can you get him in between all this? Or? I'm going to try. Oh, yeah, of course, the first rod to get hit. <laughs> oh, look at him coming in like a rocket. All right, all right. He's so... Oh, my God. <laughs> He's flying in like a rocket. A very, a very small fish. Some kind of tuna. I got him in perfectly. Yeah, he's a bonita. There we go. You want to keep him? He's dead. Yeah, he's already dead. I'll, I'll just throw him in. Oh, uh, where should I put him? Throw him in the, in the, in the there you got it fish numero uno on the tuna feather the tuna feather never fails all right so that was at 250 feet behind the boat i'll try to do the same thing over again 180 200 and 250 250 and i got it past all the other rods I don't know how I did that either, but <laughs> yeah. All right, that's it. The tuna rod, the highest one on the boat, going the furthest back. All right, now where's the big tuna? We got steak for lunch. Mm. All right, baby. Oh God! Oh, he's a good size. He's a nice one. Sushi at last. Holy Sushi at last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. Holy moly! Hello, baby. Nice That's to see you. Wow. Welcome aboard. Yeah, well, we got plans for you. You have no idea. Nice. And I'm happy. All right. Just to clean them out of the bucket. Yep. Into the ice chamber. Yeah, money, money in the bank. All right, we've been marking a lot of tuna, but they're very deep under the boat, so we're gonna try some vertical jigging we're gonna drop that down see if we can't get a tuna to bite come on tuna down she goes mm. no it doesn't feel bad we just gotta start marking some fish again yeah, we don't see anything again. i might be able to pull something right off the top of this hump though maybe let's see if i can hit the bottom when you hit the bottom out here you gotta get it off quick It'll fall into some crazy crevice. I think this is deeper than 300 feet. I think we need to go further ahead of the hump. Yeah. Just keep it jigging. Just keep it jigging. All right, first one to hook a fish. I'm gonna try short, violent pumps. Oh man, there's. Are they down Yeah, there's a lot of fish getting more. Yeah, I want that. That. Yeah. Oh, like, mm, I'm on. Sick are you? <laughs> <laughs> I got one. It looked kind of like yours fell like behind all the marks. Although there was splashing, but I think it's just our waves. I'd like to hit the bottom. Like just to feel it hit the bottom. I thought I got tapped for a second there, but I feel like I should get hit like this feels good. Come on. I'm not caught on you, am I? We are back to trolling feathers. Went from feathers to vertical jigs, back to feathers. We are persistent today and we want to fish. 
Very interesting. There's got to be fish under those buoys. There is a lot of rope on there. Your rod might be picking them up. That was definitely a hit. No, this that one's just jumping in the waves. That was a nibble of some sort. Maybe it could be worth it. There was a bunch of flying fish. Fish on the feather. Oh, so there are fish under the birds. Dang, I was hoping that this rod would hook up too. You see him splashing back there? What what was that? Is that like a little mahi or something? It's happening. It's coming. Is that a baby? That's a baby mahi. A baby Mahi. Nice. At least we know there's Mahi out there. Oh. Mahi. It's just a baby. Awesome. Bye bye, baby. That is a very happy, pretty little Mahi. Alright, gonna go look for your mother. Right Alright, buddy. Go find your mommy. Flop. Your, uh, <laughs> your high speed lure trolling caused it to tie itself a knot. Oh, I don't know if that's coming out. Uh, looks pretty tight. The snap. Come on, fishies. Probably a little mahi moving real quick. We got fast moving mahi. Very hard to troll over him. That thing will beep when it gets close. Oh, yeah. oh, you see how it just beeped? It, beeped. it lets you know very the, the feather is almost at the boat. Very, very intelligent. <laughs> it's so smart. Soon our fishing bowls are going to be smarter than us. <laughs> That's when things get bad. Fishing poles like, let me take the helm. I know where the fish are. The fish are a little elusive today. I forgot my rain jacket. Yeehaw! Dan just brought me a uh, filet tuna from our fishing trip. Look, I didn't even have to clean it. Dan did all the hard work. Listen, if you really want it, I could actually, I could eat it for you too. Oh, willing to do everything. What the hell? So Dan, show us your uh, gaff. Oh, uh, look at my gaff here. <laughs> Imagine we would have had to use that it yesterday. Is a, uh, it is a non-workable gaff. It's supposed to be more of a hook, not a... Yeah, not a slide off. We wouldn't have got anything with this. You think, you think we're gonna hurt ourselves oh. trying to straighten it out? I don't know. Do you think this is gonna work? Maybe just maybe just get the tip in it, just or yeah, just just the tip, Dan. Or maybe, hmm. or maybe, or maybe if we do it, oh. or like something so it won't keep, yeah, slide through it. Bite. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna bite on it. Wait, let me make it really tight. Come on, baby. Oh, oh God, I can't look. Oh my God, that was a big bend. Oh, oh! That's good. Isn't that good? That's very good. That's gonna work. As long as you don't get a monster fish to rebend wow. it. Wow. That, that's gonna work. All right, cool. You could put two like like bigger ones of these hooks, like. <laughs> Come on, that'll work. Yeah, no, that's that. Good now. That looks good. That looks like before. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because yeah. Florida fishing couple. Got my name on it. I know. I was like, Dan, just get a new gaff. I'm vain. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. All right, mission accomplished. Bud Light, what's wrong now with we're going to be Did cooking. You show your people you're drinking this. So, Dan. Are you drinking this? Are you kidding me? Dan, some. I, I thought. Wait a minute. Wait. Uh, let me explain. What are you doing with that? Some girls left this in my house uh -huh. like, sure. like six months ago. Likely story. And I refused to drink it. Plus, I I don't like Bud Light anyways. And uh. Yeah, I didn't like it before. And before. I try to. <laughs> I try to give it away to so many different people. No one will take <laughs> no it. You can't give it away, Dan. But I feel like bad throwing a 24 case out. But well, <laughs> imagine you got one. Was <laughs> All right. I have been defrosting the tuna now for about an hour in some cold water. It's still a little frozen on the inside, but we're gonna dice it up. And we're gonna make this tuna tartare right here, right now. The first step is kind of similar to making poke bowls. 
Oh wow, this is still very frozen. Oh and no, oh, we got Elliot coming in. Nah, buddy. Uh-uh. Back, back away. Elliot, no, 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 no. Get down. All right, this might be a little tough with how frozen it is. Uh, I can't pull them apart. <laughs> oh no. All right. Ah, it'll be okay. So there is a little bit of bloodline left in the tuna. I want to make sure that we cut that out because we definitely don't want to eat that dark, dark meat. And you know what? It's actually Elliot's lucky day because I will give him this bloodline right now. He's already begging over there, little beggar. I'll chop and dice that up. Elliot, you want some of your own tuna tartare? Come here. Get on the floor. All right, tartare kitty. I really feel like I should let this frozen tuna melt or defrost, but I'm just gonna go for it. So we are gonna chop them into very small cubes, similar to poke bowls, but actually even thinner. We want very thin. You know, just don't be afraid to slice and dice it up. I'd say that is about perfect. Maybe one centimeter, maybe even a little less than a centimeter size chunks. And then we're gonna put all of our chunks into this bowl over here. You know, maybe with the tuna being frozen, it's actually very easy to cut because it keeps its shape. So maybe, maybe it's not the worst thing that it's frozen. Kind of nice, actually. And we got ourselves a beautiful bowl of diced tuna. The next thing we're gonna do, gonna add a little bit of ponzu sauce, a little bit of soy sauce, and we will also be adding some mayo and some sriracha. We'll spray that. Then of course, our very two favorite, black sesame and roasted sesame seeds. I'll take a spoon and just kind of mix it all up until we get a nice even spread. Oven is preheated to 400 and I'm gonna slide in this bake at home sourdough bread from Publix. That's a good looking chunk of bread. I'll just stick it right in there for 12 minutes or I don't know. Let's do 10 and see where it's at. And now we're gonna add some onion, lemon, and avocado into our tartare. I think a half a lemon will suffice. Where's my lemon squeezer? There she is. All right, squeezed half a lemon in there. Now we got some onion that I wanna chop up very finely. All right, onion has been chopped. Bam. Give it a wisp or a whisk, a wisp or a whisk. There's so many different ways that you can make tartare that I'm gonna try something completely different in an upcoming episode. Next time we catch tuna, I'm gonna mash the tuna up into a paste. It's gonna be completely different, but this is kinda gonna be like my first real attempt at this. So I'm gonna try to do it this style, which is a little more chunky. Now, I think I'm supposed to cube it, but I'm worried if I cube the avocado and put it in there and mix it, it'll get all squishy. Maybe not. You know what, ah, screw it, we're just gonna go for it. That's a good looking avocado. And just like the tuna and onion, I'm just gonna kinda cut it up into chunks. The avocado I'm gonna leave in slightly bigger squares because I don't want it to mush up into like a paste. So I'm gonna just uh, keep it, I think just like that. So we'll go ahead and drop that in there. 
Shazam, and I'll do a, a light tossing. Uh, nothing too crazy. Don't want to squish the avocado. Hey, you know what? It's not squishing at all. This is turning out much better than I thought. You know, in fact, I could have chopped this avocado up even into little smaller pieces, I think. The bread. Ooh, it looks toasty and perfect. Turn the oven off and... Ooh, hot, 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 hot. Ooh, that's a hot little piece of toast. We'll let this bread cool for about three minutes, and then we're gonna give it a try. The leftover half a lemon, onion, and avocado. Ooh, you know what? This is gonna be breakfast. Eggs with onions and avocado, and then I'm gonna make a lemon water. Ooh, tomorrow morning is gonna be a good breakfast. Mm. You know what we need? We need, where's my scissor? There she is. We need some fresh chives, straight from the garden. Look at this, I have the biggest chives in all of Florida. Oh, they're growing like balls on the top. I've never seen that before. Snip. Let's cut ourselves a beautiful slice of bread. I'm gonna start from this end. Ooh, it's steamy, hot. Just go ahead and make one bread to start. A nice, healthy portion of tuna, onions, avocados. I cannot wait to see how this turns out. And of course, we will be garnishing it with our own homegrown chives. Voila. How is this gonna taste? I have no idea. First attempt at tuna tartare. Just by looking at it, I'm like, eh, you know, there's a few things I could have changed. The, the size of the avocado chunks are kind of big. The tuna chunks, they're kind of big too. It's, it's almost like, like as if I made poke bowls or something and instead of putting on rice, I just put it on bread. I think I will be perfecting this, but I'm definitely perfecting some things. Like, look, now I got a plate. So instead of all my food falling on the floor like it always does, I'm gonna actually catch it. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Wow. It's got a little spice to it from that sriracha in there. It's very creamy, very smooth. The flavor is very fresh and enlightening. This would be so good for breakfast with mimosas, like Sunday brunch kind of breakfast. Mmm. Looking at that beautiful blue water. Mmm. You can taste the avocado in there for sure. A little bit of crunchies from the uh, from the onion, but the onion is not overpowering at all. In fact, I hardly taste any onion in there. If you didn't tell me there was onion in there, I probably wouldn't know. Okay, this is a masterpiece. This would be really good, probably served with some pita chips, but I really like the bread. This baked bread has some warmness to it. So you know, like the, the avocado and the Tuna is kind of cold on top, and then you have the warm, fluffy bread on the bottom. But the, the crust of the bread is crunchy, and it's the only crunchy thing in here. So it adds a nice texture to it. It'd be kind of weird if the whole thing was so soft and creamy and smooth without any crunch. So I like having that crust in there that's nice and crunchy. Mm. I'd say that's a solid eight out of 10 right there. I, I, I don't know if it could get much better than that. I, I will be doing some experiments though. Let's just try it, like just straight up, like eat it, like spoon feed me like a baby. It's better on the bread. This is good, but it's just, it has no texture. It's just like tart. It's just like tartare, it's just creamy. Wow. Ugh. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode all the way to the end. Big shout out to my sponsors. PC Fun and Sea Eagle, big supporters of the show. Uh, be sure to check out all the links in the video description below if you want to check out my shop, my merch, my sponsor stuff. It's all really good stuff down there. Our, our seasonings, 
Have y'all seen the seasonings? We got six of them. <laughs> but yes, everything helps the channel. If you don't want to purchase anything, you know what? Just hitting that like button and that subscribe button helps a lot. Leaving a comment, I think helps the most. I'm not sure, especially when you use keywords like tuna, fishing, catch and cook. I don't know if you could somehow incorporate those words into your comments. <laughs> I think it helps the algorithm. I'm not totally sure. But uh, I'll catch you guys on the very next episode. Cheers.